Some of my favorite responses in this series come from people who ask me, and I presume rhetorically, what do you fear for making these inquiries, these scientific inquiries into race and IQ or race and behavior? As if to say that my response is somehow fear-driven, that I'm afraid, I'm hesitant to take this sort of inquiry to its logical conclusion because I'm afraid that it may actually prove that the scientific racialists are right. Now, I always get a bit of a chuckle about that because of how far I'm actually willing to take this debate. I'm willing to take it scientifically to its logical conclusion as far as anyone wants to take it. I certainly don't think that we should be afraid of the truth and what we might discover out there. But what I shoot back uh, to such people, or to at least such a question is, I'm not afraid of where science might take us. Are you afraid where reason might take us? Now the reason why I say reason actually is just as dangerous as science is. The fact that um, this entire issue, this entire debate is contingent upon the idea that it's possible to gauge another human being's intelligence. That it's, impo that it's possible for me, say that I'm properly trained or educated or whatever, to study someone else and find out how smart they are. It's not. We can't do that. It's not possible to do that. Um, I can observe what somebody does. I can listen to what they say. I can extrapolate all kinds of things from that data. But that's all that I'm doing. I'm watching what they do and I'm listening to what they say. I'm listening to whatever they, whatever thoughts they attempt to communicate to me in whatever media they attempt to communicate them. That's all I'm doing. Does that actually say that I can tell how intelligent they are? No, I can't. Human consciousness doesn't work like that. I can't step into their mind and see the process of reasoning uh, that they employ to arrive at whatever conclusions they arrive at or to decide on their actions. I can study another human being from the moment it comes out of the womb until the moment of death. But all I can do is study things that my senses are able to pick up. I don't know what's going on inside their mind. It may actually look crazy, stupid, or unreasonable to me. But to them, they wouldn't do it if it didn't look sensible to them. Now, of course, you then say, well, that's only because they're stupid. But at the end of the day, I don't know whether or not they're stupid. It looks stupid to me. But really, they may be looking at me and, say, and, and thinking that what I'm doing is equally stupid. We're back to the uh, native Canadian sitting in front of his tar paper shack smoking a cigarette. He's passing judgment on the white missionary saying, you're an idiot because what you're doing makes no more sense than what I'm doing. But at least I know that what I'm doing uh, is where I want to be right now. You're following a circuitous path to get to where I am anyway, which is crazy. You can take that line of reasoning uh, to its utmost conclusion, if you like. Um, if you're brave enough, dare I say this. There's a phenomenon out there that I've named, although I'm sure that someone has come up with this uh, before I have. The, um, the problem of futility. Everything that I ever do will be undone. Everything that I ever accomplish will one day be unaccomplished. No matter what mark I leave on the universe, be it genetic, physical, in other people's memories, whatever, will eventually be erased. Time has forever in which to do it. If it doesn't happen next year, it'll happen 20 years after that. 
that I'll be forgotten and everything that I do is forgotten. My DNA will eventually die out, if not in a thousand years, then in ten thousand, if not in ten thousand, then in ten million, if not in ten million, then in ten billion. Therefore, everything that I ever do is, in a sense, irrational. Everything. Because everything that I ever attempt to accomplish will be undone. It's impossible to act rationally or intelligently in this plane of existence. Are you afraid of that kind of reasoning? I'm not afraid of going where science uh, seems to want to take me. I would say to the people who believe themselves to be iconoclasts by uh, going into a type of science which has genetic, genetic or eugenic implications, who say to me that they are actually willing to be brave and I'm the one that's cowering back on the safety of the, the, the riverbank, that I'm willing to actually go all the way. I'm willing to apply the same sort of critical reasoning, the same sort of spirit of inquiry to everything. Um, it's all very well to sort of say that the other guy is not showing sufficient courage to actually ask questions that he might not be comfortable with especially when he finds out what the answers are. Well, okay. Take the cards, big man. Want to follow me on a ride? I'll show you how far we can go if we use our heads. Are you game? Who's afraid now? Thank you.